Hi there, welcome back to the Playwright and TypeScript course. In this video, we will face the common challenge of the automation test, which is pop-up and alert messages. These things are unexpected and uh, Playwright allow us to handle. All right, so as just previously for this workshop, I did prepare the um, basic landing page uh, with some elements to click and um, actually show the pop-up and alert. Uh, so this is basically, it. so the page is actually looks pretty simple. Uh, once we click the show alert button, the alert is displayed, uh, confirm alert, and uh, then pop-up window, which is actually right here. So let's see how we actually can automate and make Playwright work with it. As previously, we will call it workshop for .spec.es. As before, we would need to import the test and expect for assertions from Playwright test. All right. We'll start simply with the test. Let's call it handling alerts. So we got to return the page. And return the test. So as previously, we have to go to our page, which is page dot go to. Okay, to see some difference, actually, um, different from previous tests, we actually want to use the Firefox browser, and also um, to see how the test actually work in the Firefox. So the playwright itself don't know when the some alert me message or the confirm message is actually open. So we have to explicitly tell the playwright to wait for such message. Then the playwright would know actually when such message is appearing. Uh, with such thing, the page on method would help us. And uh, in the page on method, we have to pass our dialogue, which will be the um, actual alert message we do expect, and simply return the dialogue. Dialog. Perfect. So um, now we do expect the dialog type to be alert. Oops, I missed the braces here. Perfect. And we can actually tell the playwright what, what we want to do with such alert if the message is actually displayed. So we want to await for dialog accept. As you can see, there is a multiply option for dialog uh, to put the default value if it's prompt, dismiss, message. So we actually will return the message which is displayed and uh, page and type. We did use type here. And for our case, we uh, do accept it. Perfect. So now let's actually click on the uh, alert button to get, to actually get the alert. We would like to have the page dot click and to provide the selector we need. Let's take the selector from here. Do inspect the page and let's check what the selector has got. As you can see, the Firefox provides kind of mm, better UI than Chrome. Uh, once you only hover in the element where the inspector tool, uh, you you are able actually to see the selector. You can perfectly use this, and this would work without no issues. But we ne actually need only the ID of the element. That would be totally enough. So for our case, this is a show alert, conf show confirm, and the open pop up. Let's use the show alert dash for the ID show alert. 
All right, let's check how this actually would work. We don't need the debug for now. Let's put the headed. Oops, I forgot to put the only test. That should be good. Okay, open the page, press the alert. And as you can see, the test was passed, so we want it's kind of to be easy to slow down to actually see what is going on on this page. Let's put the page, wait for timeout. Perfect. Oops, I forgot the wait. This still passed. As the playwright did not wait for the beta out, the test was just ended. So that was the pretty fast. You saw that pop-up was displayed and instantly confirmed. So let's actually assert. Uh, let's actually assert the um, value of the alert message. Let's check what we have. With this. this is the simple. This is a simple alert. So we want to expect for the, uh, let's call it alert message to be, this is a simple alert. And let's put this alert message right here on the page on method. We would like to have it as uh, alert message. dialog message and we put the abate here perfect as you can see because of the actually the TypeScript scope we cannot use it so um, actually the um, alert message from the expect don't see that we actually did declare it so let's leave it as it is and just declare it on the top level so this would be the let alert message to be simple string. Uh, I put in the let instead of cons here because of uh, once we put the cons, we of course cannot redeclare it, right? Except for some some cases with the object. But in this case, we definitely want to put let as we are assigning the value and actually can use it later from right there. Let's see how this work. Page open. Perfect. Let's delete the timeout. And maybe let's put the timeout right here to actually see how this this was accepted, right? We get an alert and playwright just accepted. Wait in three. Then wait for three three seconds for it. Perfect. So now let's move to the next one. Skip this test. And in the next one we have to actually uh, confirm it. Press in the page and it will return the test. So as previously, we have to go to our index.html file and just copy it from here. And then let's move on. Uh, so um, let's also copy that alert message. And as for now, the empty string. And as previously, we would like to await for the page on and for dialog. dialog and we pass in dialog again perfect so and after this we want to assign the alert message again so this would be the dialog message so we can assert it later and what we actually want to do here is to dismiss this message. So this is pretty much handle um, once you once you are testing the page, which is covering the functionality where you can expect some 
you are actually expecting some unexpected pop-ups or alerts. So this basically give you confidence that something was in, will not make your test flaky or uh, or not stable. So um, we can also make this page on alert to be to cover a whole like the whole the whole test structure, uh, which would allow you to uh, to handle those pop-ups. Perfect. And now let's actually click on the button. Page dot click. And now we want to click on the shop confirm. All right. And we do expect it the alert message. Alert message to be. And that's actually literally check the message what is displayed here so as you can see first we click the okay and and if we click okay so the message is describing you that you clicked okay but if you click cancel the message will also mention it and this is actually what we want to expect because we want our dialog dialog to dismiss it all right uh, let's make sure that this work put the only here Right, so far see the test was passed. As previously, let's put some time out. Wait for timeout. Let's put 4000 milliseconds. All right. As you can see, I forgot the wait. And so the player right now have two choices to click OK or to click cancel. We do click the cancel, so we did assert this message, this alert message. Perfect. All right, let's skip this test and move on to the last one. Let's handle the pop up window, which I believe is most common after the, after the alert, unexpected things when we are automating our test. Handling. pop-ups page and return the test so as previously we will start from the index page and then what we actually want to do as the as I mentioned before in the previous video the playwright allow us to work with the multiple pages so in our case we should uh, understand the separate pop-up as a separate page. So we have to explicitly tell the playwright that we do expect the pop-up to be separate page. Here's how, how we can do it. So we, we will assign the, um, the pop-up and um, actually evade for it. And we would, do, uh, we would return the promise all and this would be the array with the page, wait for event. Here's the specific method actually for such events. So the playwright understand that uh, we should wait for some pop-up and this would be the pop-up event. As you can see, the wait for event can accept the, uh, the pop-ups and also uh, read the text from there and we can actually work with this pop-up. So once we have our pop-up event, we want then to um, have the pop-up method like page.click. And then it would be the selector of open pop-up. All right, actually put the comma here. So now as you can see, we have the pop-up array uh, which we which will have the two methods. First is a wait for event, and then we can actually click on the pop-up. So once we're done with the methods of uh, which are waiting for our pop-up, let's actually add another one, which would be the pop-up 
dot wait for state wait for load state so the what this load would actually give you that we just make sure that the page is actually the pop-up actually loaded so we cannot perform other methods on it right and um, after this we want to await for our pop-up to be closed but for example uh, if you want to put some logic here uh, like to assert the link from the pop-up if if it's something you do expect on your web page or not you can always you can always give it some um, if for example and actually expect the pop-up URL uh, pop-up URL and for example to be some example URL so after you make sure that the your pop-up is actually the one you're expected for you can fully operate as a normal page on it uh, if there is a, if there is a elements you need to assert or if you need additional logic to be tested let's copy it from for now and make sure that test is actually passing oops not a skip only perfect go to page click the pop-up and the window was actually closed perfect so in this video we did practice the examples how to handle the alerts how to dismiss it and how to actually work with the pop-up in the next one we will cover a little bit more about how to actually manage the separate pages as you can see that in this video we did touch a bit because the playwright understand the separate the pop-up is in separate page so the theory is pretty similar with the separate pages so in the next video, we will handle multiply windows, manage cookies, and also work with the context. See you tomorrow.